So what does it all mean and what's really behind this high-profile resignation? Our news director Jules Vasquez is on set to offer some analysis and some background. Jules, welcome on studio. Why did he go? That's the big question that I think is on everyone's mind tonight hearing the news of Eamon Courtney's departure. Well, I think that the most important thing is that it is not a three-year plan. I do not think that Minister Courtney wanted to go. That is not my information. It is my firm and strong and informed belief that he left because it's hard being in government and it is hard being in the cabinet of John Bresenio. You know, um, being in, in public in the administration of any ministry is difficult. But it is perhaps more so in the Bresenio administration because from what I detect, based on the intelligence and information that I received, there is a lack of command and control. There is a, a lack of unity of purpose and vision. There is a lack of prioritization, okay. I believe. And I think that Mr. Courtney is very practical and very business-like about priorities. And I do not think he found consonants with this approach. I don't think that this approach was in line with the way the Bresenio cabinet works. Where there are the information I have is that there are five terms and okay. you operate in this five term, I operate in this five term and everybody's kind of doing their own thing. It is not a cabinet that is strictly managed. And I think that it was just too much for him to take. He don't really need that. These persons are making huge sacrifices. Um, you know, he has a, a very successful law firm. He's, he's the chief litigator in that law firm. As a minister, you make eighty or $90,000 a year for for regular folks, that is a great deal of money, but for one of the top five attorneys in the country, that is a sacrifice. For, for political pundits, I mean, Minister Courtney has been alongside the Bresenio administration, building it from the ground up. So a lot has been said about the fact that, you know, he is often being seen as the brain, the brain of that combination. Whether here or there, how does it affect internally the Bresenio administration? Well, I think that it affects, first of all, how do you manage the cabinet without that, that, that strong voice? And I think that um, Minister Courtney was one of the strongest and most effective allies of the Prime Minister. So he loses a very strong and effective ally in the cabinet, which has an effect of, I believe, weakening the power of the Prime Minister in the cabinet. Remember, these cabinets are always ruled in tandems. Uh, you know, um, Said had Ralph. Mm -hmm. Said Musa had Ralph Fonseca. Um, George Price had Linda Rogers. The, the Manuel Esquivel had Dean Barrow. Um, the second incarnation of Mr. Price, or the, the return of Mr. Price in 1989, had Ralph Fonseca as well. And I think that Mr. Bresenio had Mr. Courtney to a lesser extent than those other persons, but I think Courtney was a strong voice backing up the Prime Minister when he chose to. Okay. Because the Prime Minister is not someone who is easily led. In sports, we use a term that not everybody is coachable. He is someone that I get the impression he can be a little bit hard to coach. Right? Um, he's not, and he's a prime minister, I understand. So I think now that the, the, the prime minister's greatest ally in the cabinet now emerges, obviously, as Francis Fonseca. But, and while Francis Fonseca is a senior minister, he, he is not as browbeating as Eamon Courtney can be. So I think that the, the government also loses a seasoned political analyst and a seasoned uh, political operative, I should say. He's the most senior mm -hmm. 
politician in the government, along with Cordell Hyde, along with Francis Fonseca. So be before we look at the, the role of Francis, however, can we zoom out a little bit? Because the truth is, how does this affect us on an international level? Minister Courtney has made some bold positions in his three, ten three years tenure in, in government. He has made some, some critical stand um, on issues that are very volatile and are still at play. What happens to the continuity of, of how, he, you know, in his role and how, is, how, is, how does it look for us on an international level? I think that Eamon Courtney was an outstanding foreign minister. I think he's one of the best we ever had. Um, you know, we've had some very good foreign ministers. Um, Dean Barrow, Assad Shulman, come to mind. But he was truly outstanding, and he was very widely and well respected. However, um, and he had many, many of our allies or friendly countries saw him mm -hmm. as a partner. His role in the immigration department cannot be understated. Immigration department, let's make no mistake, is tough. Is, a, is tough. And it's a constant mess. You know, it's not easy mm -hmm. to clean up. Um, but he was a, I have to say that his, in, his integrity is of a very mm -hmm. high standard. So while um, stuff will always be happening in immigration, it won't happen through him. This now goes to the Prime Minister's office. And the Prime Minister, his hands are very full. He's already, you have to understand, there's a cabinet in this array. Andre Habet, uh, uh, sorry, Andre, Andre, Andre Perez, mm -hmm. Abner Perez, sorry, is no longer in the cabinet. From August, he can't come back yet. Um, the, the, the former Attorney General, Magali Marin, stepped aside earlier this year. Okay, plan, let's see. Mm -hmm. I know Eamon Courtney is stepping aside. Again, he did not make any three year commitment. He's stepping aside because I just I can't handle this. He can't handle the way the Prime Minister manages right. the cabinet. That right. is my belief based okay. on the information. So I think that it, it, it affects Belize both, uh, uh, certainly the international image of Belize is very much affected. And I think partners are concerned. Francis Fonseca is, is very mm -hmm. capable, um, but his hands are very full. Very full. And he is a guy in a political afterlife. You know, he, he resigned in 2015, yes, yes. but he's still around. He's still around, and he, is, um, he is, is very capable, very loyal to the prime minister. But at the same time, he's no Eamon Courtney. Right. He's not, uh, he's let not us say, but he's not, he's not naturally a, uh, a gregarious or uh, outgoing person. Um, I consider him kind of reserved, yes. and while he's... He's, he's politically unbeatable. He's not a, a classic type of a foreign minister who, who are people who have beaming personalities. Francis Fonseca's personality does not beam, but neither did Wilfred Ellington, mm -hmm. and he was foreign minister for about 12 years, right? So I'm saying that I don't think Wilfred is viewed as one of the great foreign ministers, and I don't think Francis Fonseca um, aims to do that. He has a very full portfolio. It's a lot on his plate. How right. do you address that? Well, first of all, you have to understand that another of the reasons that Eamon Courtney left is because he and the CEO Amalia Mai could not get along. <laughs> Minister Courtney was known to only make brief visitations to the ministry office in Belmapan. He left that as a domain of Amalia Mai. Um, he has had great difficulties coexisting with his CEO, Amalia Mai. She has a, a dominant personality, as I understand it, and she wants things a certain way. And, and the way it was told to me, she go on like she's the Fahim boss. She behaves as if she's his boss. So it was a difficult, contentious and problematic relationship that was not productive. He basically left the ministry, as I understand it, as her administrative mm -hmm. fiefdom, and she didn't complain. How will Francis Fonseca coexist with that? 
or will he just, you know, will he just slink away? He will not overpower Amalia Mai. And, and, and the prime minister is not about to move her as CEO. She's one of his, historically, one of his most faithful allies. So that is also a contentious situation there. Um, so, you know, it is, a, it is what we call a fraught situation. There are, there are many forces at play that continue to create disharmony in the balance of power in the PUP. And Eamon Courtney going is huge. It is consequential. But most importantly, I think that from a political perspective... Was this about us? How does it affect PUP politically? How does it affect them in this arena right now? Yeah, I think perception-wise, mm -hmm. we have a municipal election coming mm -hmm. up. It's not a good look. It looks like a loss of confidence. I'm not saying it is. Right. And the government will certainly uh, play it that it is not. I understand that. But it is, from the public perception, it will look like you have just lost one of your star players, mm -hmm. one, of the, one of the best players, political players on your team, on one your of the most team. capable. You can say what you want about Damon Courtney, but you cannot question his ability and his, um, and his skill in managing various affairs and also acting internally as a preeminent legal advisor to government. You have to remember that he was a co-lead negotiator on the Port of Belize reacquisition. Mm -hmm. He plays a very important role in keeping the government on course as best as possible. So it becomes, you know, it's, it's really a problem. I want to just show some historical parallels because he is now leader of government business in the Senate with cabinet privileges. I recall that Assad Shoman, uh, during the Said Musa years, was um, minister, ambassador with ministerial rank. Mm -hmm. That had no precedent in history. I, I, it's things. It's something they just made, made up. up. So now he will be a, a senator with ministerial rank, but not a minister, because a senator can be a minister. Um, and his departure at year three, apart from being a big loss for government, to me it's unprecedented. A foreign minister is always one of your most senior ministers. He's, of he or she is a top dog. And for your foreign minister to resign at the three-year mark is consequential, and it is it affects, it hurts the Brasenio administration, everything. perception, everything. Mm -hmm. But it is damaging for the Brasenio administration. However, I want to create a small historical pivot. Um, Jorge Spat and Henry Canton resigned in the first Said Musa term. They resigned in... 2001 and 2002, mm -hmm. respectively. Mm -hmm. respectively. And those were, again, high-profile ministers, very uh, extremely you know, well-respected, mm -hmm. seen as capable, highly educated individuals. They resigned, and PUP went on to win in 2003. They lost some seats. Inevitably, you will. So it is not politically Down. terminal for the mm -hmm. PUP. But that happened in year, f year four, more or less, for the PUP. This is happening at the end of year three. And it's not a good look for your foreign minister and, and the man viewed as a, as, as, the, as a living brain of the cabinet. What do we expect now, moving forward? Um, moving forward, I think that, that the, the, the government has to, has to put a, as good a face on it as possible. We stress that he still... Uh, he still has overall responsibility for the cases at the right. ICJ. He will still be in the Senate as a leader yes. of government business, although I'm not sure there is some shading of, of certainty as to the authority to do that. But the UDP did it with Doug Singh, and it's, there is precedent for it. But the PUP will do its best to say that, hey, he's still in the picture, mm -hmm. he's still leader of government business in the cabinet. But you have to understand that as most successful people, Eamon Courtney looks out for Eamon Courtney. He know I take he know I take a hundred licks for the team. It might take one or two. I'll give you a micro example. When the special prosecutor uh, uh, motion went to the Senate, so that's when government wanted to 
appoint a special prosecutor and bypass the DPP. It was unconstitutional, but they insisted on doing it because this was needed for the El Marnakis. But people said it would create a doorway for that to happen again. It was rejected at the Senate. It was clear it would have been rejected. Now, there are two interpretations. A leader of government business, it's arguable because you come from the cabinet. You should go in there and fight. Mm -hmm. Fight the senators to get their support. Minister Courtney, Senator Courtney didn't fight because he knew or he felt intuitively or he felt factually that the government was misguided in doing this. And he let it Saturday. lie. He did not go and fight for it because it would be fighting for something that doesn't make sense. And it was, in fact, it, it lied there and it died there. It was, it was never um, taken to vote because it was so defective. But I'm saying he's not that guy. He and I take 100 lick for John Bresenio. And I think at this point, while he and Mr. Bresenio are close personal friends mm -hmm. and have been friends for decades, decades, most of their lives, he will not just continue to take lick after lick. When he sees there are clearly certain misdirections, the government is going in, and you cannot micromanage an adult. Mm -hmm. He cannot go and micromanage the prime minister and say, do this, do that, do that. He can offer his counsel and advice. And either it is followed or it is not. Many times it wasn't followed, perhaps too many times. Okay. And Make he choice. had enough. I believe. Thank you. Jules, thanks for joining us. Yes, thanks so much. We'll continue watching how it plays out in the days and weeks to come. First, Joe, let's take a break now. When we come back, we'll go into the stores to find out how the sugar shortage is affecting your Christmas cakes. Don't go away.